This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this evening. Lord, we receive your word with faith in our heart. We receive your word with humility. That your word will challenge us, Father. That your word will inspire us. Your word will transfer, transform our life. We pray, Lord, that your word will bear fruit hundredfold in our life. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The book of Romans, chapter 12. I wanted to talk with me to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Very briefly tonight, I'm speaking of what I call be fervent in spirit. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. I want to admonish you to be fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. So this is part one. Be fervent in spirit. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, all right, Apostle Paul began to challenge us uh, uh, that those of us who have received the message of the law, that we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, all right? So he challenges us uh, in Romans chapter 12. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 12, all right? When you read from verse 1, this Apostle Paul challenging us to be uh, present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. That is from uh, verse 1 up to verse 2. And of course, from verse 3 up to verse 8, he also challenged us to uh, make use of the spiritual gift that God has given to us, all right? So first, he challenged us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Then he moved to uh, four for us to recognize the gifts that God has given to us and to begin to use them in accordance with the faith that God has given to us, alright? But in verse 9 from verse 9, Apostle Paul began to challenge us to begin to behave like Christian that we are, alright? He began to challenge us to live a life that is befitting our faith. Now we are children of God, we are Christian, so he challenges us to live as Christian that we are. And look at what it says in from verse 9 now, Romans chapter 12 from verse 9, he said, let love be without hypocrisy. Yeah. Alright, that's what it means by dissimulation. Yeah. He said, above what is evil, that is hate, what is evil, cling to what is good. Yeah. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. In verse 11, this is where I'm coming to now, he said, not lagging in diligence that is not slothful in business. So, as Christians, we are not to be lazy in what we do. And then he said, but what? Fervent in spirit. Let somebody say fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Say fervent in spirit, serving the law, serving the law. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm challenging you, encouraging you to be fervent in spirit. Now listen to this. In serving the law, I want you to know that it is absolutely valuable it is necessary for you to guide again, being slothful, being dull, to guide again, being cold and being lukewarm in spirit. It is so easy that in the service of the law, for one to come to a point where you become lazy and then you begin to drag your feet, you drag your feet to come to the house of God, to pray, to fellowship, you drag your feet, whatever you are called to do, you just drag your feet. But listen to it, that is a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing. So Paul said, do not be slothful. Be fervent in spirit. And listen to this, it is your responsibility. It didn't really say prayer that you be fervent. It said no, you be fervent in spirit. So it is my responsibility. It is your responsibility to see to it that you keep your spiritual father. That you don't lose your seal. Are you paying attention? That you don't lose your excitement. That you don't lose your enthusiasm in the service of God. Never you lose it. 
Now listen to this. Listen to it. This is very important. In the book of Leviticus chapter 6, the book of Leviticus chapter 6, I want you to see 12 and 13 now. It is, it is very important for you to guide the fire of God, the love of God that has been poured into your heart. The day you gave your life to Christ, the day you became born again, the love of God was poured into your heart. The Spirit of God came to live in you and He set your soul ablaze with the love of God. You need to guide the fire. Are you paying attention? Look at Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 12. The Bible says, now, I want you to see the instruction that God gave to the priests under the old covenant. Now, listen to this instruction. Very important. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. Now, the fire came from God. The first sacrifice, God sent fire from heaven. And then God gave a command, a charge instruction, that this fire that I've sent down from heaven, you must do what? Keep it burning. Let somebody say, keep it burning. Keep it burning. Now, look at what it says. Say, it shall not be put out. So the fire must not be put out. And then he gave instruction to the priest. He said, the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it and they shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering. Look at verse 13. A fire shall what? Always. Let somebody shout always. Always. Always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Now that's what God is saying. So that then you gave your life to Christ. God sent his fire into your heart. The Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. God pour out his love into her. And God says, it is now your responsibility. You need to see to it that that fire is always burning. Let's all say always burning. Now, there are many Christians that they used to be on fire, but they are no longer on fire. Now, that should not be your. That should not be you. Yes. Now, so you must see to it that you keep the fire burning. Yes. Always, always. So, on the altar of my heart, God want me, and that's what I'm talking about. That's what it means to be father in spirit. To keep the fire of God yes. burning always in your heart. Romans 5, 5, the Bible says, God has poured out his is love in our heart by his spirit and so the day you believe and confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior God by his Holy Spirit pour his love into your heart you must see to him that that love never expire Amen. you must see to him that that love of God in your heart never helps away you must see to him that that love of God in your heart never away Amen. the fire of God's love in your heart must always be what burning let some say burning now there are many Christians today that are serving God now they are praying, they are reading their Bible they are doing evangelism, they are coming to the house of God, they are serving God but listen to this, it is no longer with fervency, it is no longer with excitement, it is no longer with a fresh fire, the first fire that they receive, that's what Jesus in Revelation chapter 2 Jesus was rebuking the church of Ephesus look at what he said to them the book of Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1, he said to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? This thing says, he who all the seven stars in his right hand, who works in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles, and are not, and I find them liars, verse 3, and you are perceiver, and you have patience, and you have labor for my name's sake, and I'll not become weary, verse 4, nevertheless, now look at what Jesus said he has against them, I have this against you that you have left your first law. You have abandoned your first law. In other words, all that you are doing now, you are not doing it with that first law anymore. Now the seal has gone down. You have lost the favor. You have lost the excitement. So it is possible for you to still be doing what you are doing. Are you with me? But not with the first law anymore. Not with favor anymore. Not with zeal anymore. Not with excitement anymore. Not with the same love with which you used to do it. And that is why uh, this night, from this night, I want to challenge you. And not just only challenge you to be fervent. I want to show you what it means to be fervent in spirit. Because as, as, as ministers, as believers, now that you need to know how to do it. 
you need to do that to maintain your spiritual fiber. Never to go cold, never to become lukewarm till Christ returns. All right. So we're gonna see what does it mean to be fervent in spirit. Why you should be fervent in spirit. All right. And that's what we're gonna begin to look at how to be fervent in spirit, how to sustain, how to retain your spiritual fiber. All right. But but tonight I just want us to look at it briefly. What does it mean to be fervent in spirit? Now the scripture commands us to be fervent in spirit. So what does it mean to be fervent in spirit? Now, according to English dictionary, to be fervent is to have or show great emotion or zeal. All right? When you have great zeal, that is what it means to be fervent. It means to be extremely hot. It means to be what? To be glowing when you are hot. All right? Now, that is what it means to be fervent. It means to be intensely passionate. To be fearing. That is what it means to be fervent. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Let's go back to that Romans. So to be fervent is to have zeal. Whatever you are doing, you are doing it with great zeal. With great emotions. Alright? You are not dragging your feet to do it. You are extremely hot. Not cold, not lukewarm. You are extremely hot in the service of God. Hot in your heart. Your heart is always burning hot towards God, towards the things of God. You are glowing. You are radiant. Nobody can come close to you and they will not catch fire. All right. Anyone that comes near you, they are they are steer up in their heart. That is who God wants us to be. That is what it means to be fathered in the spirit. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 he said not lagging in diligence not slothful in business but fervent in spirit serving the law now that word fervent there is the Greek word that is called zeho now listen to what it means it means actually to boil with heat now that's what it literally means like when you apply heat to water and it boils that's what it means now so zeho means to boil with heat to be hot that's what it means now, now it's also used, you know, like uh, metaphorically for like when they say someone is boiling, boiling of anger, boiling with zeal. Now, just like when you apply heat to iron and it begins to glow, to glow, to shine, to radiate, that's what it means. All right. So to be feminine spirit means that you are boiling with zeal for what is good. You are boiling with zeal for prayer. When we say woman of pray, you are the first one to raise your hand. It is time for fasting. It is time for evangelism. You are the first one to be there. That is what it means. You are boiling with zeal. That's what it means. That's what the word zeal means. It means to boil with it, to be hot. It means to glow. That's what it means to be fervid. That's what it means to be earnest. That's what it means. Now, so now pay attention. I want you to understand really what it means to be fervent. We say it means to boil with love, to boil with zeal. It means to be hot. It means to be f- to, 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 to be earnest. All right. But I want you to understand as we look at this Romans chapter 12, verse 11 in different Bible renditions. Now that brings it home. No, so we're gonna pay attention to what it means to be fervent. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna look at this uh, scripture, this verse, Romans 12, verse 11, and we'll look at it in different Bible rendition. I want to start from M.A.T. Montgomery New Testament. Romans 10 verse 11. He said in your diligence be free from sloth. Be glowing in spirit. Glowing. Slave for the master. Be glowing in spirit. So to be fervent means what? To be fervent in spirit means to be glowing in your spirit. You are shining. You are radiating. There is no dullness in your spirit. No depression. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's what God wants us to be. And do you know what? It is our responsibility to see to it that we are always glowing in the spirit. Radiating the love of God. Radiating the joy of God. Common English Bible Romans 12 11. He said, Don't hesitate to be what? Enthusiastic. Be on fire in the spirit. Let someone say, Be on fire. Be on fire. All right, so God said, Be on fire in the spirit as you serve the Lord. Be on fire. When you are called to lead prayer, you are on fire. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In anything you are called to do, you are doing it with enthusiasm. You are on fire for the Lord. Glory be to God. Now, in Amplified Classic Edition, it says, Romans 12 11, never like in zeal and in earnest endeavor, be a glow and burning with the Spirit. That is, with the Holy Spirit, serving the Lord. You are burning with the Holy Spirit inside of you, burning with passion from the Holy Spirit. And I visit says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor, serve the Lord. 
Keep your spiritual fire. Don't let anything dull your spirit. That's what he's talking about. Don't let persecution, all right? Persecution is one of the Christian experiences. Yes. All right? Challenges and tribulation. Yes. Don't let it quench the fire that God has kindled in your heart. Keep it. Yes. Let's only say keep it. Keep it. Yes. And do you understand? So it is my responsibility to keep it. Yes. Notwithstanding the persecution, notwithstanding the challenges, notwithstanding the tribulation, notwithstanding what I'm going through or what I have to go through, the Bible says keep your spiritual zeal, keep your spiritual fervor, keep the fire in your soul, your fire for prayer, your passion for the word of God, for fellowship, for evangelism. Keep it. Tell somebody, say, keep it. Keep it. Alright? God didn't say I will keep it for you. God said, you keep it. You keep it. So it is my responsibility to keep it. To keep it. Alright? So he said, keep your spiritual fervor. Message Bible, I love the way he put it. He said, don't burn out. Keep yourself well and aflame. Be a last servants of the master. Look at what he says. He said, don't burn out. Keep yourself well and aflame. Keep yourself on fire. Oh, brethren and Lord, yeah, keep yourself aflame. That's what he said. Keep yourself encouraged. Encouraged. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Don't wait for somebody. Oh, oh, God brings people to encourage you. Fine. But don't wait for that. Don't wait for that. That's what the Bible says. So you need to see to it that you are fueling yourself. You keep yourself well and aflame. You keep yourself encouraged all the time. It is your responsibility. And I'm going to tell you why that is important. All right? Now look at how uh, uh, this uh, translation put it, WNT, Weymouth. He said, new translation said, do not be indolent when zeal is required. Be thoroughly warm-hearted. Be the Lord's own servant. All right? Now, Bible in basic English. He said, be not slow in your walk, be, but be quick in strength. Tell some say, be quick. <laughs> he said, be quick in spirit. Be vigilant. Be alert. Don't be dull. Don't be sluggish in the spirit. That's what it's talking about. Now, Nels, Bible said, do not slug in sin, but be what? Enthusiastic in spirit. Serve the Lord. Here's it to read version. It says, as you serve the Lord, work hard and don't be lazy. Be excited if you're serving him. Let's all say be excited. excited. Alright? So whenever you are called to do anything, be excited about it. Be excited. Whatever you are given to do in the job, be excited. It is time when you wake up in the morning, be excited to observe your morning devotion. Be excited about praying, about worshiping the Lord, about reading the Bible. Be excited to go out and preach the gospel to someone. Be excited about inviting someone to church. Be excited about fellowship. Now, now listen to this. It is you that have to do that. Yeah. It is not God. It is you. So that's why the scripture says, be fervent, be excited. I am the one that needs to do what to keep myself excited. That's what the Bible said. And as we move on, you are going to understand why and how to do that. But I want you to know that God expects that you keep yourself excited yes. about the things of God. Don't wait for somebody to excite you. Yes. Keep yourself excited. Keep yourself excited about the word of God. Keep yourself excited about serving God. Keep yourself excited about giving to God. Keep yourself excited about sacrificing for the things of God. And good news, he said, work hard and do not be lazy. Serve the Lord with a heart full of devotion. A heart that is full of commitment to God. He said, serve the Lord with what? A heart that is full of devotion. Now, now I love this. Now, look at what it says here. Come on, Bible. He said, do not be lazy, but work hard. Serve the Lord with all your heart. Let me tell somebody, say, serve the Lord with all your heart. So the Bible says, you serve the Lord not with half of your heart. But with what? All of your heart. With all of your mind. With all of your strength. So you see, to be fathered from this scripture that we've read implies to be glowing and shining and radiating in spirit. It means to be on fire in the spirit. It means to be burning with the Holy Spirit. It means to keep your spiritual fervor, your fire, your excitement, your zeal. It means to keep yourself well and flame. It means to be thoroughly warm-hearted. It means to be quick in spirit, not dull, not slow, not sluggish. It means to be enthusiastic in spirit, to be excited about serving the Lord. It means to serve with a heart that is full of devotion and commitment. It means to serve the Lord with all your heart. But why do I have to do that? Why must I keep myself alert 
Where must I keep myself excited? Where must I keep myself aflame? Where must I keep myself on fire for the Lord in the spirit? Where must I keep my heart being full of devotion and commitment to the Lord? Why is it necessary to be fervent in the spirit? Number one, now listen to this. Now if you want to remain relevant, in, in the work of God, in the ministry, if you want to be effective, if you want to be fruitful, then you must learn to keep yourself excited. You must learn to keep yourself aflame. You must learn to keep yourself fuel. You must learn to be what? To be ferment in spirit. It is to make yourself relevant. Now, listen to this. God only uses those who are excited about his work. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, God does not flow through. God does not use those who are not excited. How will God use you, you know, to minister the word of life when you yourself are not excited about the word of God? So, if you want to be fruitful, if you want to be relevant, you want God to always flow and manifest through you, you need to keep your passion alive. You need to keep your excitement, enthusiasm alive. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you need to do it. Now, because if you are not excited, then God cannot flow through you. If you don't keep yourself on fire, now you cannot be fruitful in the service of God. You will not be relevant. So if I'm cold, if I'm lukewarm, oh, oh, it is time of prayer again. Oh, this is Sunday. Oh, God, I have to go to church again. Such one, your life can never be a blessing to anyone. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, when anytime you want to do, you are dull, you are sluggish about it, you are not on fire, you are not excited, how are you going to ignite somebody? How are you going to excite somebody? How are you going to stir up someone? When you yourself, your heart is not stir up. Even when you are praying, you are called to live prayer, you are called, you are not, your heart is not on fire, your heart is not there, you are not doing it with the whole of your heart. How is that prayer going to do anything to anybody? Somebody is not going to catch fire or prayer with her. It is when you are on fire because it is fire that we get fire. If somebody listen to me, you want fire, then get close to someone that is on fire. But when you are not on fire, your life cannot ignite someone. It cannot be a blessing to others. That is why you need to keep yourself on fire. That is how you remain relevant in the ministry. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, when you are no longer excited about the work of God, when you are no longer on fire, oh, oh, ah, I'm the one that is going to preach today. Oh, gosh, I wish it's next week. Such a person, your preaching is not going to bless anybody. Now, because your heart is not aflame with the word of God, because you are not excited yourself. Now, so, for you to be, remain relevant and effective and fruitful as a servant of God, you need to learn to be fervent in spirit. To serve the Lord with the whole of your heart. To be passionate about whatever you are doing. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, the Bible says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It becomes what? Good for nothing. Good for nothing. But to be thrown out and trampled on the food by men. So when I lose my fire, I become good for nothing. That's what the Bible says. When you lose your passion... When you lose your spiritual zeal for God, when you lose your fire and your love and your zeal and your excitement and your enthusiasm for the things of God, then you become what? Good for nothing. Good for nothing. Amen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Is somebody paying attention? Yes. That is why you must ensure that nothing push out, nothing uh, pu- pu- pour out the love and the fire of God. Nothing must put it out. You must guide the fire in your soul. You must guide the love of God in your soul. Because if, it's, if you allow anything to put it out, then you become good for nothing in the service of God. You become good for nothing in the ministry. Now in Revelation chapter 3, now Jesus warned the church of Laodicea. Look at what he said to them. He said, verse, he said from verse 15, Revelation 3, he said, I know your word that you are neither cold nor hot. He said, I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will do what? I will spit you out. I will vomit you out of my house. He said, you are good for nothing. That's what he says. Yes. So when you are not hot, 
for the things of God, you are not passionate, you become what? Good for nothing in the hand of the Lord. You don't want to be that, you know. You want to be a relevant minister. You want to be someone that God can always count upon. You want to become someone that God can always flow through. You want to become someone that God can always use to motivate, to challenge, to steer up, to cause revival in the heart of someone. Then you yourself, you need to keep yourself revived. You need to keep your heart on fire for the Lord. You must not allow the challenges, the tribulation, the persecution, whatever you are going through, to put out the fire in your heart. You must guide that fire you must ensure that fire is always yeah. burning. It's always burning. Yeah. Because that is what we keep you to become relevant. Yeah. That's what we make you to remain fruitful and effective in the service of God. Somebody listening to what I'm talking about. Yeah. So why must I be fervent in the spirit? Now listen to this. If you are not fervent in the spirit, if you allow the fire to be put out, if you allow the fire to weigh, there is no way you're going to finish your race with joy or fulfill your ministry. Yes. Someone listen to me. Yes. You can't fulfill. Now you see, now the ministry, fulfilling your purpose is like a man running a race. All right. You need to keep your seal alive. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You need to keep your eyes fixed on, on the finishing line, on the prize, on the goal. Now, once you take your eyes away from it, and then you allow distraction, and then you become cold, and then you become lukewarm, you can't finish the race. You can't finish the race. You cannot fulfill your ministry. So for me to fulfill my calling, for me to fulfill my ministry, and finish the race with joy, I must keep my heart aflame all the time. I must keep myself revived and excited. I must wake up in the morning excited. Excited about God's purpose for my life. Excited about my calling. Excited about my ministry. Excited. Oh yes, I'm going to leave prayer today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to prepare to worship. I'm going to give the word of exhortation today. I'm going to prepare. You must. That is the way you can fulfill your ministry. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, you don't wait for anybody to encourage you. If you want to last and fulfill the ministry that God has given to you, that is the way. That is your responsibility. So it is my responsibility to keep myself excited about preaching. You understand what I'm talking about? It is my, I don't wait for anybody to do that for me. I must keep the fire burning in my heart because I know if I stop that, I won't fulfill the ministry. I will think of something. I will look for something else to do. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, if you don't keep your heart on fire before you know what is happening, you, you lose interest in the ministry. You look for something else to do. So, if you want to finish your race with joy and fulfill the ministry you have received in the law, you must be fervent in the spirit. You must learn to keep your heart on fire. You must learn to keep your soul on fire for the law. Look at what Paul said. Now, we're going to learn more about Paul from next week. Paul was one of the disciples, uh, the apostle of Christ, that finished his race with joy. And from the beginning, uh, when, when the Lord set his heart on fire on his way to Damascus and Acts 9, till the very end, the fire kept glowing, kept burning. We're going to learn about his secret, how he got to do that. But look at what he said in Acts chapter 20. He was going to Jerusalem and he was speaking to the elders of the church at Ephesus. Look at what he said to them. He said from verse 22, Acts 20, and see now I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem not knowing the things that will happen to me there. He was not sure, but he said, and said that the Holy Spirit testified in every city saying the chains and tribulations are with me. Can you imagine? He was going to Jerusalem and everywhere he goes, people were telling him via prophecy, by the Spirit of the Lord, that Paul, persecution awaits you, tribulation awaits you. They are going to arrest you. You are going to put in chain. But look at what he said in verse 24. He said, but none of these things move me. Amen. Nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Paul says, in spite of those prophecies, in spite of prophecy about chains, about tribulation, about persecution awaiting me in Jerusalem, he said, I just keep my heart steady on finishing. All right? He said, I keep my soul aflame. I was not discouraged. I remain excited if I go to Jerusalem. And he said, the reason is so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord. So if you don't keep your heart excited, you won't finish. That's what Paul said. Amen. Oh, they told me, 
persecution awaits me, tribulation awaits me. He said, but that cannot put out the fire in my heart because I know I must finish the race. I must finish the ministry. And to finish the ministry, the fire must be burning. You must keep the fire burning in your heart. The love of God, you must keep it burning in your heart. Your passion, you must keep your passion. You must never lose it because once you lose it, you won't be able to finish yes. with joy. In 2 Timothy, that's why Paul says, from the seat, he said, I'm, for I'm already being part as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. It is only the fire of God in your heart that can make you to finish in spite of the persecution, in spite of tribulation. So, you want to finish the race, you want to fulfill your ministry just like Paul, then Keep your soul aflame. Keep yourself well and aflame. Keep your spirit on fire. Guide the love of God in your heart. Don't let anything put out that fire. Don't let the love of God wane or heavy away from your heart. Now lastly, before we begin to pray, why must I be father in spirit? Why must I see to it that I keep the fire of God burning in my soul always? Now listen to it. If you want to receive the reward of your labor, of your service, when the Lord returns, then you must keep your soul on fire yeah. till the very end. Now, if you are going to uh, hear the reward, if you are going to receive the reward of your service, the reward of your labor, then you must not be discouraged. You must not let him allow nothing to put out the love, the zeal, and the passion, and the fire of God in your heart. That is very important. Hebrews chapter 6, a few more scriptures, and then we pray. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 10. He said, for God is not unjust to forget your work and your labor of law, he proceeds from verse 10 which you have shown to us his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Verse 11, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Show the same diligence, the same zeal, the same passion, the same favor till the very end. Verse 12 said that you do not become sluggish don't become lazy. That's what he said. Don't lose your spiritual fervor. Don't lose your excitement and your zeal. But imit imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. If you want to inherit the promises, if you want to receive the reward of your labor, then what do you do? Show the same passion from the beginning to the very end. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Galatians 6 9 says, and I read from Amplify, I prefer in Amplify Classic Edition. Galatians 6 9, and let us not lose out or grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. In prayer, in studying the word of God, are you with me? In learning, all right, in fasting, in prayer, in evangelism, in fellowship, he said, do not lose out. Do not grow weary. Let that be a time when you say, well, I'm not interested anymore. All right? Because when you do, you don't get a reward for what you have done. He said, for in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not lose it and relax our courage and faith. So when are we, how are we going to receive the reward? He said, if we do not lose it, if you do not relax our courage and faith, Amen. if we don't lose the passion, so if I lose the passion, I miss the reward. That's what he's talking about. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So don't lose the passion. Let me tell someone, say, don't lose the passion. <laughs> now, don't lose the zeal. Now, there is nothing you will go through or that you are going through that early disciples of Christ did not go through. And do you know what? If they kept their zeal, their love, their passion till the very end, we also can do it. Yes. We can do Amen. it. And that's what I want to show you. How did they do it? How did someone like Paul, like Peter, how did they keep their zeal, their law, their passion for the Lord, their excitement till the very end? Even when they warned them about persecution, even when they put them in the prison, when they yes. beat them, and you listen to me, when they beat them, when they scorched them, yes. when they threatened them with death, the Bible said they left and they went out with joy and they never ceased to still preach. How did they do it? That's what we're going to be learning starting from next week. But I want us to 
know that it is our responsibility Amen. to ensure that the pressure of this war or the pleasure of this war do not put out the love and the zeal of God in our heart. Amen. It is my responsibility. It is your responsibility. Are you listening to me? All right? Amen. To keep the fire. That is God's fire in your heart. The day you became born again, the day you became spiritually regenerated, Amen. God kindled his fire in your heart. Yes. God kindled his fire in your soul. Yes. God has poured his love in your heart. And do you know what? Like he told the priest of all, God is saying, keep the fire burning on me. Just as he told, as we read in that Leviticus chapter 6, he said, well, keep the fire burning on the altar. The fire must never go out. And that's what God is saying to you. That's what God is saying to us tonight. The fire must never go out of your heart. I want you to rise to your feet and tell somebody, say, the fire must not go out. Out of your heart. Tell that person, say, keep the fire burning. Keep God's fire burning in your heart. Keep the fire burning in your soul. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, help me. I will keep the fire burning. I will keep the fire burning. I will keep myself well and aflame. I will keep my spiritual fervor. I will be on fire for the Lord. Till the very end. Till the very end. Lord, I don't want to lose my zeal. I don't want to lose my fervor. I don't want to lose my excitement. The fire will not go out of my soul. I want you to say it with confidence. The fire will not go out. Devil, you cannot put out the fire. Oh, you cannot put out the fire. Remo shakatalianda la gada gada. Yes, the fire will not go out. The pressure of life will not put it out. The pressure of this life will not put it out. No tribulation, no persecution, no challenges, no lack, no situation, no man, no woman will put out the fire in my heart. I will keep the fire burning. Yes, I will keep it burning. Yes, I will keep it burning. I will keep it burning. I will keep the fire burning. I will keep the fire burning. I will keep the fire burning. By the help of the Lord, I will keep the fire burning. I will keep my heart aflame for the Lord. I will keep my heart on fire for the Lord. I will keep my soul on fire for the Lord. I will not allow persecution to put it out. I will not allow the pressure of this life to put it out. I will not allow the pleasure of life to put it out. By the grace of God, by the help of the Lord, I will be made excited. I will be made excited about prayer. I will be made excited about the word of God. I will be made excited about fasting, about fellowship, about evangelism. I will not grow dull in the spirit. I will not lose my zeal. I will not lose my favor. I will not lose my fire. I will remain body until Christ comes. I will remain burning, burning with zeal for God, burning with the love of God, burning with passion for God, burning with zeal and excitement. The fire will not go out. I will not allow the fire to go out. I will not allow the fire to go out. It will burn always. The fire of God's will burn always. The zeal of the word of God we consume it. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for our brethren. That the fire will not go out of their soul. Oh, they will not lose their zeal. Let's pray for every minister in this church. That they will not lose their passion. They will not lose their zeal for God. They will not lose their love for God. They will not lose their spiritual father. Lord, we pray, oh God, for every minister. We pray, Lord, for all your children of God. Lord, in this assembly, Lord, we will not lose our zeal. We will not lose our passion. We will not become spiritually dull. We will not become spiritually sluggish. Oh, we will not be slothful, Father. In prayer, we will not be slothful. In studying of the world, we will not be slothful. In evangelism, we will not be slothful.
slothful. In the service of God, we will not be slothful. We will remain on fire till the very end. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, ringa da bo seketel yanda lagaba. Ribreketel yanda lagaba bo shetel yanda. I just wanted to hold your brother, your sister. I just hold someone. And I just wanted to pray for that person. I wanted to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. You will not lose the fire of God. You will not lose zeal for God. You will not lose your interest in the things of God. You will not lose your excitement about the things of God. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will keep the fire burning. You will keep the fire burning. You will keep the heat burning. You will not grow cold. You will not grow cold. You will not become cold. You will not become lukewarm. In the name of Jesus. Oh, be on fire. Be on fire. My sister, be on fire. My brother, be on fire. Don't allow what you are going to. Don't put out the fire. Be on fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. We will not lose the fire. We will not lose our interest. We will not lose our interest. We will not lose our passion. We will not lose our excitement, Father. We will remain on fire until you come. Thank you, Father. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We hope you have been challenged encouraged and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www dot the school of discipleship dot org dot uk this teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering donation and gifts from partners like you you are welcome into partnership with us today for information on how to become a partner please call 1-866-292-9270 or 1-866-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.